Hello, my friend. The Bible tells husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church. Then the question is, is he capable of loving his wife this way? Is he capable of serving her just like Christ serve the church. In this video, I will break down the scripture and show you how you are capable to carry out this assignment as a husband and become the kind of man, the kind of husband that your wife can't resist. She's going to be magnetized and captivated by you and your love for her. You are the kind of husband that she loves coming home to. Let's have this conversation. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the channel. I am Doran, and this is not easily broken. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, it says, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. The first and most important thing that we need to establish is, is it possible for a husband to love this way? And if so, how should he accomplish this? What is the motivating factor for him to love his wife in this manner? This is a critical part that a lot of people who teach this topic missed. First, he cannot love this way if he does not love God and have a relationship with God through Christ Jesus. It is impossible for any man in his own flesh, in his own ideas, in his own way to love his wife this way. You see, we were created in the image of God and in God's likeness. And so if a man does not tap into God, who is the source of his existence, then how can he love his wife this way? In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8, it tells us that he that loveth not knoweth not God, because God is love. His nature is love. The true essence of God is love. And if we are created by God in the image of God, then we have the ability to love our wives this way, but we cannot do it alone. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to guide us along the way in order for us to demonstrate and accomplish this. Guys, I need to explain this because if we don't have a relationship with God, and a relationship with Christ Jesus, then what is the motivation? What is going to motivate you to do the work? What is going to motivate you to sacrifice? What is going to motivate you to serve? What is going to motivate you to show up when showing up is not even what you really want to do? And so verse 25 tells us to love our wives just as Christ loved the church. Christ was willing to serve. Christ was willing to die. Christ was willing to, to, to give his best to the church. Love is not about what you get. True love is about what you give for God's soul love that he gave. To demonstrate love, you must give. That's why the key to loving our wives is first learning how to love God and learning how to love Christ Jesus. And in verse 26, it tells us that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. It is through the word of God that we are cleansed. In Psalms 119 and verse 9, it tells us that how shall a man, how shall a young man cleanse his ways, but by taking heed according to the word of God. In Psalms 119, also verse 11, it tells us that thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. See, a kingdom man, a kingdom husband, must serve his wife and love his wife, and he must also read the word of God with her. He's not reading the word of God with her because she doesn't know how to read by herself. Of course, she must have a personal relationship with God by herself, but because he is a leader, because he is the head, because he is the husband, right? He read the word of God with her because it creates spiritual intimacy. I believe this is one of the things that women gravitate and desire their husband to do, to lead spiritually in the marriage. I am telling you, we have gotten emails, a lot of questions being asked. How can I get my husband to lead spiritually? It is so important for the husband to take that leadership spiritual role. And this is also an area that the enemy attacks the most. Most Christian couples don't pray together. They don't read the word of 
God together. Because the devil know that a praying couple is a powerful couple. Th listen, they're able to overcome their challenges better when they are in sync together, when they pray together, when they have a better spiritual relationship, right? Um, verse 27, it says that he might present it to himself as a glorious church, not having spots or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. See, this is what Christ did for the church. Through his unconditional love for her, Christ presented her spotless before God. Now, we must love our wives and, and we must also love them unconditionally. To love your spouse unconditionally, we must first admit that they might have condition that is not necessarily favorable to us, that we don't really like. Maybe it's an attitude, maybe it's personality, maybe it's habit, I don't know. But guess what? We must love them anyway because Christ loved us even with our flaws, even with our hangups, even with our dents and bruises and scars and all these things. Christ loved us the same way right? To love this way, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. Guys, let's be real about this. This is not easy stuff we're talking about, but that's how God wants us to love. When a husband loves his wife, it does not matter whether she has scars or issues. His love for her should influence change in her life. This is my personal thought process, and I believe I am right. I believe if a man marries a woman who right, who genuinely desire to follow God and to be a wife. A man who loves and cares for her can transform a woman that is broken, a woman that has been damaged from past relationships, scars and bruises and issues that, that allow her to be guarded and be protected. When a man knows how to love her and honor her as Christ wants us to do. He can take a person like that and transform their life through the way he loves and treat her into a beautiful, amazing, gorgeous person. Now, he is not really uh, um, doing the transformation. That's not what he is doing. He is activating what's already inside of her. That person is already there. But the, the pain or, and the trauma and the issues of her life and what she has been through from past relationship or maybe a previous marriage just numb her. She doesn't know how to be free to be herself. But the love of a man towards his wife can transform a peasant into a beautiful queen. Why? Because of the desire to love and to serve her. Man, I, I, I'm passionate about this, man. I, I, I'm talking about it and I'm getting fired up because I believe this. I know it can happen. We are initiator of love. We were created by God to become initiator and creator of love, just like he is. That's why God tells us to love our wives. Verse 28 says, So ought a man must love their wives as their own body. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Man, this is powerful. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Love your wife as your own body. Listen, this is what separates men from boys. Oh, hear me and hear me well. See, see, when a man loves his wife, he's loving his own body. This is exactly how you become one with each other. Just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. See, when Adam was in the Garden of Eden, Eve was already hidden inside of him. She was already there. God did not breathe breath into Eve when God created Eve. All God did was put Adam to sleep, take a rib from Adam, created the woman, and bam, there she was. Because Eve was hidden inside of Adam. And when God take Eve out of Adam and then presented Eve to the man that she came out of, Adam looked at her and said, you are bone of my bone, you are flesh of my flesh. I will call you woman because you came out of me. Wherefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So when Adam and Eve became husband and wife, 
he now connect with her again, just like how she was connected with Adam inside of him. That's exactly what happened when you and your wife get married. When you get married to your wife and you consummate that marriage, you are becoming one flesh. The two becoming one, interwoven together, fused together, synchronized together. It is a beautiful thing. See, marriage is a reflection of God's love for man and Christ's love for the church. That's why you love. That's why you serve. That's why you show up. That's why you sacrifice. That's why giving becomes natural to a person that knows how to love. I mean, this is powerful, man. When a man love his wife, he's loving himself. D did you guys get that? She is an extension of you. That is why you must love her. This is the power of love and marriage. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, guys. I want you to visualize that. I, I mean, it's, it's just amazing, y'all. Verse 29, it says, No man ever hate his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as a Lord to the church. Wow. This is how a godly husband loves his wife. I mean, think about it, my friends. When you nourish your body, when you take care of your body, when you, you know, when you take a bath and when you feel good about yourself, it demonstrates that kind of love that you need to have for your wife. That's why you don't abuse her. That's why you don't mistreat her. That's why you don't call her out of her name. Because when you call her out of your name, you're actually calling yourself out of your name. When you beat upon her, when you cheat on her, you're cheating on yourself. When you do bad things to her, you're doing bad things to yourself because she is an extension of you. That's why the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 22, you know, verse 30, 36, you know, through 40, that the scribes and the Pharisees, they came to Jesus and they asked him a question, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the kingdom? And Jesus said that you must love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is likened unto the first. You must love your neighbor as yourself. As a married man, as a married woman, your spouse is your closest neighbor. How you love your wife reflects who you really are. The relationship that you have with your wife is a reflection of the relationship you have with yourself. This is why when you stand at that altar, when you're there at the altar, you know, you are at the altar because you are about to sacrifice. You're about to sacrifice yourself. You're about to give. You're about to serve. You're about to make her the most important person in your life. You leave and cleave to her. You are now responsible to love and nourish her. You are now the provider, the protector. When her father walked her down the aisle and, 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 and the officiating officer asked a question, who give this woman to be married to this man? Her father is going to say, I do. That's when you take now the responsibility to love, to honor to treat her with respect, to show up and to nurture, to help out around the house and to do things and to make her feel like the queen that she deserves to be treated as. That's the sacrifice that you've made. And when she comes next to you, she is now meeting you at the altar where both of you now are living sacrifice in your marriage unto God, serving each other, loving each other, and taking care of each other. That's what it's all about, my friends. This is what it is all about. This is why you can't take marriage lightly. This is why you got to take marriage seriously. This is a covenant and a lifelong commitment. And you cannot do it right without God in your life. This is why it's difficult for most people in marriage. You're not growing and your marriage and your life is not God-centered. And my friend, this is it for this video. I hope that it was a blessing to you. And please, if it helps you, please give it a like and please share and subscribe to our channel. And here's another video that you're going to watch. It's going to help you, man, to become a better version of yourself. It's going to help you to build a stronger, better marriage. Thank you so much for watching. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one.